southwest showers and thunderstorms today with strong southwesterly winds to 37 miles per hour. It's a numbers game, especially for the situation that we're in. We're coming off of a high water event here. The outdoors is not a hobby. It's not our passion. It is our way of life. We make the perfect cast, slow our breathing to execute a perfect shot, spend hours researching locations and techniques. Regardless of effort, we fail. Nice knock. <laughs> this series is not about incredible bites or trophy animals. Our goal here at Day One Outdoors is to educate our viewers, utilizing new technology to offer a different perspective. Watch as we research new areas, plan out the day, and adjust to changing conditions. If not for other experienced outdoorsmen teaching me along the way, I wouldn't have this life. I owe it to them to pass this knowledge along. I owe it to you. Join us here on Day One Outdoors, and let's learn how to become more successful in the field and on the water from day one. lighter one, right? We are biting flesh. For some reason, these dollies up here really love flesh. Half right there in the middle. All half? Okay. Yeah. Deadly. Okay. For sure. Well, we're up here on a uh, northern Washington river today. We're actually doing something a little different than normal. Um, we're targeting dollies today using twitching jigs. The reason for that is a lot of the salmon this time of year, it's December 2nd now? A lot of the salmon are dying now. So a lot of these dollies that come up the river this time of year feed on the flesh and the eggs. You can run beads for them too, but I like to twitch. You can cover water better and uh, it's a more fun way to catch them. So now that it's December, they're all, most of the chums we're seeing now have already spawned and died. These silvers are probably not dead yet. They're spawning now up the creeks and stuff. And there's a few left in the river as well. Most of our dollies here are our sea run. Um, there's some resident ones too, and I don't really know how to look or tell the difference. Like I'll catch them in the summertime in June and stuff. Uh, when I'm springer fishing and stuff. And I think a lot of those are the residents, but there's way more this time of year um, because we get the sea run ones and they come up from the ocean, obviously, all the way up the river here and they spawn October and November. And then they stick around for a while. They're eating the salmon, like we are saying and stuff. So uh, it's pretty unique. I don't know, there's not too many rivers where they have a population of dollies like this. For the most part, you want to use a smaller, shorter rod that's light because even most of my clients, like when they twitch all day with these rods, their arms are just dead afterwards. So you don't want to be using like a nine foot steelhead float rod to twitch, right? You want to be using something lighter. So Cody brought a whole box of uh, twitching jigs for us. A lot of the dollies in this river sit in like two feet of water. You can use a three eighths too. I like half ounce and uh, three eighths for the most part. It just kind of depends on what you're fishing. But uh, jigs like these lighter ones just looks, I mean, flesh color like dying chum and stuff. All, most of the chum are dead up here by this time of year. So a lot of these big fish are up here feeding on that. So we have a whole selection of jigs here. So we're running braid, which I have on all my reels for everything, spinners and twitching and float fishing and everything. But uh, we're running a bumper section of uh, Maxima. I have 15 on mine. You want to keep your jig as close to the bottom as possible without touching the bottom. It's a little bit harder technique to get down if you haven't done it before, because like if it's 10 feet, you can't fish the same as you would if it was two feet, right? Because you're going to have to move it faster. So in a deeper pool like this, we're popping it and letting it fall, you know, for two or three seconds or whatever, a second. And then if you're fishing a shallower spot, you're going to move your jig faster. So basically the most important thing is you want to make sure it falls with slack line between each twitch. I notice a lot of guys will reel too much. Um, they, it's almost like they want to keep contact with the jig. Um, and I guess if you really get it down and you can follow it down, it makes sense. But for the most part, you want to let your jig fall with slack. Mr. Suckerfish is what it looks is like. It? Oh, I told you. <laughs> I told you they live over here. <laughs> Got me all excited, I, man. I don't know why. We're on the board. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool drag. Oh, big old coho. <laughs> Doing the coho rolls gone. Did it break off? It broke off. Whoa. Oh. Yeah. No. Are you nice me? knot. <laughs> 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 oh. 
Well, maybe I should have checked that, that snag. <laughs> Something happened. Maybe the sucker fish uh, sabotaged, oh, yeah, totally sabotaged you. <laughs> Dude, brutal. That's all right. I, that, that was nice. Was that was like, a big old boy. Yeah, it was. At first, I was like, are you kidding? These dollies fight that hard? Right. <laughs> no, that was no, a that cool. Was <laughs> Definitely a big red, red, red guy. He looked really cool. He was bright. That's my fault. Maybe check the leader. That's my fault. <laughs> maybe he'll... Uh, <laughs> Get it good, again, get he'll get a, back. Maybe he'll get a good lady with that uh, piercing he's got now. <laughs> oh, that pisses me off. No, not the fish. Guide air, guide air. Yeah, this is awesome. So you first called me up, what, a couple months ago and said, hey, yeah. you have any interest in catching Dolly Varden? Yeah, I do, because I've never done it before. Right. <laughs> a little silver, isn't it? That sweet neck. <laughs> you like that? Oh, look at oh that. yeah, Jig comes out of there too. Good old Barbless. We landed our first fish of the day. We uh, had a second fish. <laughs> okay, we caught a sucker. We landed our first real fish of the day. Cody just uh, had a unfortunate knot malfunction on the first one. But we got this little wild coho here. There's a few salmon left this time of year. Kind of an incidental catch fishing for dollies, but pretty common this time of year. So nice little fish. Fishfield is your one-stop shop online for the gear you need here in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. From salmon and steelhead, saltwater, trout and kokanee, even crabbing. Visit fishfield.com today to place an order with no sales tax and have the gear you need shipped fast. Fishfield.com, we have what the Northwest Outdoorsman needs. Every once in a while, a new lure comes along that catches every angler's attention. It could be because of all the irresistible colors and finishes, or the patented skip beat action, or maybe it's the wide variety of sizes designed for salmon, trout, walleye, steelhead, and mackinac, and more. But just for the record, we know one thing for certain. We didn't design the maglip to catch fishermen. Yakima Bait Company. Danny reached out to us and asked us if we had any interest in coming up and targeting Dolly Varden. I was really interested for a couple of reasons. First, I've never caught one before. So of course I want to come take Dolly Varden off my bucket list of fish to catch. Second is because a lot of times fisheries like these get ignored here in the Pacific Northwest. We get so focused in on salmon and steelhead that we just forget about all these other really cool fisheries that exist here in our own backyard. Sam season is just wrapping up here on this river and all across the region and people are starting to gear up for steelhead. Well, guess what? We got Dolly Varden that we can target, which are just such cool fish. Like Danny's already mentioned, these fish are anadromous. Now, Dolly Varden are essentially a bull trout too. And there are anadromous fish. There are also the resident fish. So there are fish that will be here year round, but there are also these Dolly Varden that go out to the ocean and then return. Now, when they spawn, they have a lot better survival rate than say Chinook, Co or Chum, which is nearly zero, but maybe not quite as good as steelhead. It's about 50%. So some of these fish, when they do spawn, don't ever make it back. They just have one spawn cycle. But what's different about these fish is that they can spawn about every other year. And what they found is that a lot of times these fish, once they become larger, they go further and further upstream to spawn. So their patterns actually will change throughout their life cycle. So they're a really interesting fish. Now, unlike salmon or steelhead, these are not a salmonid species. They're not a salmon, they're actually a char. And other char that we have out here in the Pacific Northwest are the bull trout, the Dolly Varden, or say Mackinac. And they are a completely different species than salmon, steelhead, the Chinook, Coho, or Chum that we catch on this exact same body water. So it's a really cool fish that exists here in our own backyard that gets forgotten about. And so far I've got a sucker fish. I broke off a big Coho. I landed a little dink. And maybe I'll make the right cast here soon enough or actually Danny will get me on the right spot. I can catch my very first Dolly Varden. Danny, how important is 
water clarity when it comes to targeting these dollies. What does that do to where they're sitting? So just like any fish, it's huge. I mean, it'll change two days. You know, you got five or six feet of viz, and then two days later you got 10, you'll go from a really good day to slow. I mean, just, you don't want it crystal clear, which unfortunately it's been cold, so we got clear water today. Sure. But it's just like a salmon or anything, like I'm sure you know, you go twitching for coho and you have three feet of his and they bite like crazy and two days later it's like they won't bite at all. Yeah. So just like that, I mean they're the same. Um, I would say they're a little less finicky as salmon just because they're always actively feeding, but still. Is it going to change where they sit in the holes too? Yeah, they'll go, they'll go deeper. So like when the water's dirty up here, I catch a lot of them in the most random shallow flat water. Yeah. But uh, today they're going to be in, in the deep holes, just like the few fish we hooked back there were in the deepest part of that hole, obviously. Well, if nothing else, I actually like low clear water because it concentrates the fish. It does. You know, it, it, I always say the best thing that you can do is try and eliminate water, figure out where they're not. Right. Today, that's going to be pretty easy. Yes. Okay, there's going to be a channel at the left, um, kind of like that last hole where it's super shallow and it gets deep. That's going to be the only shot for this spot here. You want to fish this top end here or down yeah, a little bit further? So you can start kind of where you pointed the second time, yep. Right here? Yep. yep. I've had some days where, yeah, it's obviously like you get more. That's a That's fish. That's fish. That's probably a dolly. Hey, hey, hey. Maybe. Flesh colored. Hey, you stole my fish. That was my shot. <laughs> no! <laughs> Damn it! Hot no! sucker bite, dude! Hot sucker bite! <laughs> I thought for sure that had to be a dolly. <laughs> What Dude, two for two. That's it. That one's clean. It's a good one. That's bigger than the last one. They're now hungry. This, this river really does have a trophy sucker fish. It really I told yeah. you. From the start, I said it did. <laughs> Who knew we were going to do an episode on sucker fishing? <laughs> Thanks for playing, little buddy. Oh, oh yeah. Is that a sucker? It has to be, right? What the heck? <laughs> These don't bite twitching chicks. You gotta, you gotta. Hold on, I gotta hurry up and cast again. This hot bite. <laughs> They're biting it. I mean, this ridiculous. Here we go. Here comes another one. Okay, so we're gonna change up the episode. Welcome to Day One Outdoors. Today we're targeting suckerfish. <laughs> Flesh jigs. Oh, I'm on. Don't tell me it's another sucker. <laughs> I thought you were gonna mess up. It's gonna be something real. Woo! Dude, it's hot. <laughs> Told you, a hot sucker bite. Look at this thing. Bounce him in the bullet bass. That's a big old. Uh, <laughs> Angry male there. Look at the size. <laughs> I've never seen this happen. Hold on, I'm gonna get this another one. Here we go. I need one of those lighter jigs. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah, right now we got a lot of things working against us actually between the clear water, the high sun, cold water, but also their food sources quite plentiful right now. All these chum and coho are dying or spawning, so they have all of the eggs, all of the flesh that they could want. So I just asked Danny, I just missed a bite right here, and I asked him if they were gonna, if they ever come back and bite again. And he said, you know, right now in the clear water, full bellies, one just chased through the boat. Did it really? Yeah. I don't doubt that either. <laughs> right there. It was salmon. Was it? Yeah, it was salmon, yeah. Looked like a, like a coho about nice. like three or four pounds. Oh, there's another one. There we go. Oh, that's a good one. Throw one. Uh oh, we found something. <laughs> that's a go, it's rolling. <laughs> it's not a sucker fish. I could, that would be a dandy of a sucker. That's actually a nice fish. That's a great fish. So you can tell the water's cold, see how. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Look at that fatty. Yeah, so that fish there, he didn't fight too well, and that's because of the cold, cold water, up. and he lasted himself. He rolled up and your whole bumper the, section on Yeah, it. <laughs> he did the typical coho roll where he just barrel rolls up, gets the line wrapped up. He gets in there. Here, I'll take that for you. Yep. I love it when it comes tight like that. <laughs> just bink. Oh, you twitch yep, all day and it, it's random. You're just twitching all day long and then one, one time finally. It wrapped your whole bumper section up on its face though. Yeah. yeah those coho, they tend to do that. Look at how far, like when you actually push it where, where, she, where she had it first. Look at that. Yep, just that choke it. <laughs> there it goes. I like the barbless beautiful look. Looking, beautiful looking jig in the water. There it is. Look at that. Killer. I like that color a lot. That's, Flesh be, color. that's close to that pink and white I was saying I like a lot. Yeah. It's got the white legs. Whew. Yeah, buddy. Good fish. That's perfect. We needed that.
salmon swim up to 3,000 miles to return to their exact place of birth to reproduce. Well, most of the time. I made up for losing that one earlier. <laughs> that was a really nice fish, especially for this time of year, getting that type of quality of coho. It's not the one we're after. We got sucker fish, we got coho, now we just need Dolly Varden. But that little guy did the trick. I like it. I think it's all wrapped up, but. Oh yeah, he was doing a lot of wraps. That is a monster Dolly. Hop out and go get him. That's exactly what we need. <laughs> go get him, Danny. It's up in the mouth now, so. Okay. Yeah, buddy. That's hey, a dolly right there. Dude, I'm okay with you chasing that one down. It's like, my first dolly ever. I don't right. want to lose that one. That's, that's not a bad one either. <laughs> That is a nice fish. Dude, that's a giant. <laughs> How big it is. Nice Dude. job. <laughs> this is my first dolly ever. That's a good one. Might even measure it just to see, huh? Yeah, look at that. Look at that. On the flesh jig. It was awesome. rolling like a salmon. And it like, was. Right. It was rolling like a coho. <laughs> looks like eagle or something. Yep. Looks like she might have spawned a while ago and is just kind of hanging out now. Yeah, definitely looks spawned out like a spawned out summer steelhead. Right. 27. 27 incher. 27. First dolly barden ever. And it's a stud. <laughs> Want to hold her now? I can get the yeah. net. Okay. You got the net? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there she is. Just an awesome specimen. Love the white tips on their fins. I just felt a bite on that same cast and felt like it missed it. And then two more twitches in, boom. They look so much like the Mackinac that I catch up on Odell and a Crescent Lake. And that's all because these are the exact same species, part of that char family. Just like the bull trout, Dolly Varden, Mackinac. Again, they're not salmonids. They're not Chinook Co. Salmon Steelhead. They're their own species that exist right here in our local riverways. First Dolly. Danny, I will always remember this trip because <laughs> you got me into my very first Dolly Varden, man. Perfect, that's awesome. And that was, was a big a good one. Size that one was a too. good one. That's not your average, average fish either. What do they average out here on these? Twenty trips? inches, probably. 18, right around 20. twenty. Yeah. I don't care if it was twelve inches. I know. <laughs> Cross that fish off the list. I've now caught a dolly varden. Great fish. I love it. Thanks, buddy. Yep. We got the grand slam. We did. Sucker. <laughs> Sucker. Coho. Coho. Dolly. I like it. That's all that's here. <laughs> Oh, what? Oh, what? Huge dude, that was a giant that dolly. Was a big one. Oh. Just chased it all the way oh, to the boat. Why didn't he bite it? I didn't. I didn't see it chase it until no. I pulled the jig out of the water. He probably would have bit it if you saw him too. Oh my gosh, dude! Dang. That was bigger. That was bigger than, that was the, bigger than one. the one I landed. That was a big one. What? <laughs> that was. It big. almost stuck its nose out of that the water. That was a monster. Yeah. I'd... There you go. Smaller one. That's awesome. I got to set my second dolly, but I want that big one, dude. I want that big He was a giant. Where is he? I'm on. Yep, I'm on. Is that him? I don't know. It's got some size to it, dude. It's got and it's not rolling like a coho either. I think he's wrapped up already. It's a dolly. Boy, this little spot has some in it. Yeah, not a bad little fish. That's a clean, I think that one's fresh more out of the salt water. Such a pretty fish. Look at this. Oh, he's a fat one. Jeez. He is fat. It looks some fatty, yeah. I like it. Such a cool fishery. And not because of the numbers, not because of anything else, just they're fish that you don't see anywhere else. It's a nice one.
healthy one. Such cool fish, man. Yeah, it's a nice looking buck. He's a fresh one too, one of those ones that are, haven't spawned yet. Yeah, it was up there in that flat water. Just nuts. Cool, just, you'd never, you cast out there, you're like, there's not much. Well, it has like all these there. little tiny ditches and it goes from like sand to big boulder, sand to big boulder. It's just right. a lot of structure. But what's crazy, it's clear water, high sun. Yep. You wouldn't just, think they were here. They're just I not used to. I first cast over there in that dark water choppy stuff. Right. And you're like, no, no. You, yep. you need to cast <laughs> over that, there. That flat over there. Yeah. I cast <laughs> over there, two twitches in, boom. Yeah, they, I don't, you know, they don't get fished on or anything. So they just, they're up there looking for food or whatever, so. Yeah. Cool fish to fish for. This is an awesome fishery. Yeah, it's fun. This is really neat. I appreciate you bringing us out here. That's cool when you're the guy that you can call <laughs> fish out like that. They nice this. work, man. They love this spot. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Yeah, they like the spot. All right, you got to catch one, man. No, I'm having a lot of fun, I, but. I like watching them just as much. <laughs> I've caught plenty of fish. There he is. Just another perfect specimen. Look at how bright that thing is. White tips on the fins. What I love about these fish, too, is the size variance. We've caught big ones little guys and everything in between what a cool fishery thanks for playing little buddy in these holes like this this is a deep this is a big deep salmon hole so you're going to twitch like slow right you're going to pop and fall pop and fall and you want to make sure you stay down on the bottom so we'll go really slow like you cast it out we're letting it sink way down and we're giving it these one to two foot pops we're popping it but we're letting it fall pop again a lot of people will get that down in a deep salmon hole and then well they go to fish in a three foot flat or something where twitching works great too and you let it fall like that it, you're snagging up you lose all your jigs so it is something where if you get it down where you can fish it right off the bottom no matter what depth you're looking at i would say it's probably the best way to catch obviously dolly silvers kings like it i've caught steelhead doing it it's i don't even use spinners and stuff anymore i used to um i got my, I bring a box of twitching jigs and leader and that's all I bring. Well, it's a versatile technique too because you can, like you mentioned, fish real shallow. You can fish real deep. You know, spinners or spoons, some spoons you can get down in this deep water like this. Spinners trying to get them down in that deep stuff, trying to keep them down in that part of the water column is difficult. But I think also what guys have a difficult time doing is trying to get the cadence down. Because a lot of times, you know, bass guys, we lift slow and then drop on a slack line so it flutters. What we're trying to do here is make it pop, hence twitching, right? Yeah. They're definitely in there. Oh, wow. Look at that guy. They're in there. Let's so tell this one right away was a salmon. I think the other one was a big dog. Ready? Nice coho. Coho. Great. Unhook him on that thing, deadly. There we go. So how many fish did you hook before you finally landed one out? I think that was my fifth fish I hooked. <laughs> I, I got close on a couple. And I had lost one the very cast before that. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, man, you I lost it. my touch. I haven't hooked one in a while. <laughs> cast over there. I, I, I thought I was just going easy on you earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Good call, Danny. Ooh, this one's staying down too. Have to go for the double at this point in the day, right? Yep, got to go for the double. We've caught enough now. <laughs> Found a little pot of fishes. What did uh, the guy do when I hooked my fish? Did he grab the net? Nope. He grabbed another rod. And guess what? We're doubled up. <laughs> Danny's got a big one on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring mine up here. We're about to get a look at her. You're about to get a look at it? Not hooked right here. There it is. Boy, it looked bigger. Oh, that's still a good one. <laughs> look at that. This is a big old hen. This is cool that's looking awesome, jigs in the water. Oh, oh. <laughs> almost, almost that almost bad. backfired on us. <laughs> Really 
fun day. Not just because we caught fish, but I got my first Dolly Varden ever. I'm learning to fish water that I usually skip over. I'm feeling more confident with twitching. It works really well for these dollies, and this is such a fun fishery. You know, I mentioned it earlier, but we focus so much on salmon and steelhead here that we forget about this amazing fishery that exists right now once the salmon season's over. And that's big dollies. And I really wish I got that one that chased it all the way to the boat. I know you guys didn't see it, but it was a big, big buck. We got a real good look at him. <sighs> that one will be heartbreaking, but I did get a solid 27-incher for my first one too. Never can complain about that.